I give you from time to time little tidbits or tools that you can use that will help you deal with life, life that can sometimes be difficult. And one of those is this little saying, do the next indicated thing. So when do we have to remember, do the next indicated thing? When life is falling apart, when things are overwhelming, when you get bad news, when you have too much going on, when you feel like you're going to fall apart and you can't do anything else. It's like when you're when you're just overwhelmed completely, you're at the end of your rope, there's nothing more you can do. You just don't know, how am I gonna handle this? How am I gonna make it? Really, we do this in life all the time. We just don't realize it. You know, we plan things in little tiny steps. You know, we go to the grocery store and we pick up the first thing on our list and the second thing on our list and the third thing on our list. And then when we get done, we go to stand in line at the checkout and then we have our, our things tabulated. Then we pay our bill. Then we walk to our car. Then we load them in the car. Then we get in the car. See, everything is in these little steps, but we don't think about it when we're not overwhelmed. But when we are overwhelmed, it if we take everything on at once of everything that we have to do when we're already at rock bottom emotionally, physically, mentally, financially, spiritually, relationally, then we feel like, no, can't do it. Can't even lift my head up. So you've got to remember, okay, what do I need to do? I can do the next indicated thing. I had a couple of uh, fundraiser parties or get togethers, dinners in my backyard years ago. And I was having about a hundred people come on Friday night and a hundred people come on Saturday night. And uh, that's a lot of work and a lot of things to take care of. And then it just so happened that my, one of my family members was coming home to my house after an injury and was going to be confined to bed and I was going to be taking care of her at the same time that I was doing these parties. Now, could I cancel the parties? No, that wasn't an option. So I had to figure out how to do the next indicated thing, which was to figure out one little thing at a time to plan for the party to work and to take care of her. And so it's just one thing and then the next thing and then the next thing. And I did it. I made it. Parties came off. They were great success. And she was fine. She was taken care of. And uh, remember, you can always ask for help during that, too, if you can. But just one little step at a time. Uh, if you get find out that your spouse is... Um, has been unfaithful or you find your your spouse comes to you and says they want a divorce uh that's a shock right you're in complete shock you feel like you can't function you do one little thing at a time if you were going to fix the kids dinner you fix the kids dinner if you were going to do homework you do the kids homework with the kids so it's whatever it was that you were going to do before you got the bad news you do. You just go through the motions. You can do this under in crisis. You can do this in under a lot of stress. You can do this, you know, and just just to to figure out how to make it through. Just to remind yourself, I don't have to do everything at once. I don't have to take on the whole divorce process and all the feelings right now. I just have to feed the kids. That's all I need to do. I just need to do the kids' homework and I need to put the kids to bed, then I can fall apart, then I can call somebody, then I can think, and then it's only that night that you have to make get it, make it through, and then the next morning to get up and get the kids to school, and maybe get yourself to work. This is how it is. You break it down piece by piece by piece. Now, what's the next indicated thing? It's whatever would come next. What, what were you going to do next before you got this news? What were you going to be doing next before you found out whatever it was that you found out? Do that. Or what is the next, next indicated thing in the next thing that you have to do? If, like I just said, when you go to the grocery store, you, you don't 
grab all your groceries at once. You don't have to be in all the different aisles of the store. You only have to be in that one aisle in front of that one thing that you want at that moment. It literally is making it through maybe the next second, maybe the next minute. And it's just doing whatever it is. You feel like you're falling apart. You stuck on the side of the road, you can't handle being there. What's the first thing you do? You're overwhelmed. You're supposed to be at work. You're supposed to be at a meeting. And now you got a flat tire. What do you do? Make the phone call to get help for your flat tire. Or if you know how to fix a flat tire, get started. Get the spare out. Okay. Jack up the car. That's what you do. It's kind of like doing, instead of just fretting over the way things are, you ask yourself, what can I do about it? Do you know that that's actually part of the skill of resilience? Resilient people problem solve when they're in difficult situations. They figure out what can I do? What are my options? And they feel very in control and very confident. And they feel like they've got a way to handle things. So resilience is a really great healthy skill that will help you get along so much better in life. Lost your job. Okay. What's the first thing you do? Maybe you file for unemployment, start looking at the want ads, maybe let some people that you know, that know you and your skills in your field, maybe people that you interact with as a client um, in part of doing your job. And Hey, hey you know, I'm, I'm, I'm laid off. I'm, I'm available. So you just start taking one little step without knowing the end, without knowing the outcome, without knowing what is going to happen. You can respond by doing the next indicated thing. Listen to this proverb. It says in Proverbs 24, 27, finish your outdoor work and get your fields ready. And after that, build your house. What's what is the wisdom in that? Wait, should you build your house or should you plant your fields? You can't do them both at once. It's probably really overwhelming to come to a empty, rocky field that's got weeds and no house and try to figure out, oh my gosh, this is so overwhelming. How am I going to build my house and how am I going to plant my fields and how am I going to do this? And oh, you could get so overwhelmed that you just sit down and say, oh, me and my, I can't do this. Instead, it's like, oh, Another way you could say this is first things first, plant your field so that your crops could start growing so that when you're building your house, you get your house built or in process, the crops will start to grow. And you'll have something to eat before your food runs out. Okay. Pretty logical. And then um, Proverbs 24, 10 says, if you falter in times of trouble, how small is your strength? No, we don't like to hear that, but you know, that's resilience. If you want to be resilient, don't falter. Okay. Figure it out. What's the next indicated thing that you need to do? And Proverbs 18, 14, a man's spirit sustains him in sickness, but a crushed spirit who can bear. So if your spirit is crushed, when you get the, that news from the doctor or from a, a test that you had, that you have a cur incurable Ill illness or a chronic illness or uh, cancer or something, and you all of a sudden just just completely dis debilitated to where you just you can't even do anything. Yes, you're in shock. We all are when we get news like that. But basically, it's like if I sustain my spirit, then I have the strength to make that phone call to set up the appointment with the oncologist and to get some treatment options looked at and to so it's the next step take the next step don't take on your entire treatment all at once just one little step at a time life works a whole lot better when you do the next indicated thing than try to worry about everything that you have to do all at once so thank you for watching change my relationship